All right, today I thought it might be kind of fun to have spots in our read aloud video um, for chapter 13. <clears throat> All right, so here is your joke today. Kind of applies right now too. It says, you never really appreciate what you've got until it's gone. Toilet paper is a good example. So you go to the stores right now, it's hard to get toilet paper when you need it. All right, this chapter is called The Long Green Tunnel. In the U-boat, Ajax Blakerot and his crew had made their reports and gotten some water and were getting ready to sleep for the night. Those who weren't on duty, U-48's work was done for the day. September 17, 1940 would go down in history as a big day for the U-boat. I need to pause for just one second. There are a lot of loud noises here. It's kind of hard to hear. <clears throat> they had torpedoed two ships, the Benares and the Marina, together totaling 16,000 tons. But Ajax and his crew were already thinking about new targets. Out there in the ocean were more enemy ships, big ships, a lot of tonnage, prime targets for their eels. The next day, U-48 would sink the Magdalena, another 3,000 tons, leaving no survivors. But that would be the next day. For now, the battle was over. For passengers of the city Benares, those who were still alive, freezing in the North Atlantic, the battle was still raging. Some, like Sonia and Derek and their mother, had yet to get off the ship. If they had any chance of surviving, they had to move quickly. The Benares was about to go down. Barbara Betch's lifeboat was steady and very full with passengers and crew. It had been a rough landing for this boat. Too, and it had taken some water on some water, but it wasn't too bad and Barbara had on her heavy coat She was comfortable enough though the waves kept splashing water onto into the bottom of the boat Her feet were wet the water seeping in through her shoes. She had arranged herself as best she could But she was startled to hear cries and wails children's cries help help She was able to see lifeboats tipping and people falling into the ice-cold water children falling she saw lifeboats with children in them. Children? She had no idea so many other children were on board the ship. And now with horror, she watched as they plunged into the sea. Help! Help! They screamed. Jack Keeley was one of those children. He had been in the lifeboat with Johnny and Bobby Baker. The icy rain pelting down on him. He'd been shivering in his pajamas, barefoot in boots, bare feet in boots. Then, about 20 feet from the water, the boat hit, and he was dumped into the sea. Justice had happened to his little sister, Joyce, but he didn't know that yet. She died, but he didn't know that yet either. While Johnny Baker was getting back up onto the ship with the help of the crew, Jack was nowhere anyone could see. He had gone under, plunging beneath the surface, down, down, down. Yet unlike so many others that night, he held his breath, didn't swallow water, didn't drown. His life jacket helped him bob to the surface. He opened his eyes. There was a ship! He was right next to it. And as luck would have it, there was a ladder too. Hanging off the side, he grabbed the bottom of the ladder and hoisted himself up. It was a long way up. He grabbed on with his hands, one rung at a time. But just above him was a sailor, also climbing. And the sailor had on a big pair of boots. Every time Jack put his hand on a rung of the ladder, the sailor unknowingly stepped on it. Finally, halfway up the ladder, the sailor figured out what was happening. He turned around and told Jack, Wait until I'm at the top, then you can climb up. Jack did as he was told, and he made it to the deck of the sinking ship. The Betches were slowly making their way toward the bow, the bow, when a man stopped them. Follow me, he said. I know where there are life rafts. I'll see what we can do. He wasn't crew, just another passenger. But they followed him. All of a sudden, there was a huge explosion. Another torpedo? No, the boilers. Smoke and flames. The man pushed right through the encouraged Margaret Beach to come with him. She didn't want to, but she followed him. They made it past the fire. The man was a BBC reporter named Eric Davis. He led them to where the rafts were on the deck. He would launch them. If they were to get on a raft, Margaret realized they couldn't take everything they had with them. She couldn't take her special travel bag. She chose the items she wanted most, which she put in her pocket. She kept the identity papers and passports, money 
in the pouch around her neck. She wanted to keep her jewelry too, but when she took the box out of the bag, the lid flipped open and everything spilled out. Sonia, help me get these, her mother said. They knelt down and managed to retrieve them all. The rings, the diamond brooch. Sonia, put this box in your pocket. I have no room for it. There was no time for discussion, so Sonia took the box. The top had a glass inset, painted with a fancy-looking old-fashioned lady in a peach-colored gown and a big hat with bows. A throwback to the more glamorous life, an easier time. Sonia put the jewelry box in her coat pocket. Jack Keeley was standing near them. He watched Eric Davis and another man lift rafts and throw them into the sea. They were heavy wood, and it seemed impossible to Jack that one man could launch a raft on his own. But that's what they were doing. All right, so there is the picture of him grabbing onto the ladder. Maybe Jack could get one. All of a sudden, a big wave came at him. Jack was swept off the ship. Again, Jack went down, 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 losing his boots this time. It seemed as though he went all the way to the bottom of the Atlantic. Someone was calling out to the beaches, Come here! Come down here! A man was standing on a raft, and he was in a uniform. Sonia worried. She was not good at climbing, but she made her way down the ladder and jumped into the water near the raft. The sailor pulled her on and helped her get settled. Another woman was already there. Up on the ship, a sailor helped Sonia's mother get down the ladder. Derek made it down and onto the raft as well. Once they were all safely afloat, Eric Davis jumped into the wild and stormy waves. I'm going to pull you away from the ship, he told them, so you won't get sucked under when the ship goes down. He grabbed the rope of the raft and swam with one arm, pulling with the other, and moved the raft away from the Benares. I must leave you now, he said, and he swam away. There was no room for him on the beach's raft. Eric managed to get on a raft with another man, a member of the crew who was lying down, obviously injured. Davis had just settled himself on the raft when he heard screaming. Help, help, he heard. He looked and saw a little boy holding on to a piece of wood the size of a pocket handkerchief. It was Jack Healy. After he was swept off the ship, Jack had bobbed back up to the surface of the water, grabbed onto a little piece of wood, and immediately started yelling for help. Then he saw a raft with two men on it, one lying down, one sitting up. He hollered more, help, help. Eric Davis and the other man pulled him onto the raft. Jack crouched on all fours, sopping wet, shivering, and looked at the man who'd saved them. I say, mister, I say, thanks very much. Jack was safe, for now. All around him, he could hear the screams of children who were not safe. Bess Walter and Beth Cummings were struggling to survive. They had been thrown into the water when a lifeboat flipped over. Bess went down deep down through what seemed like a long green tunnel. It would have been easy to give up, just let herself drown. It would have been, she thought later, the most sensible thing to do. There were no other lifeboats around, all the other ships in the convoy had left. Chances for rescue that night were non-existent. The younger children from her boat were dead or dying. She didn't know where Beth was. She knew Beth couldn't swim. She was sure only people who knew how to swim could possibly survive. Beth didn't know how to swim. She spent summers visiting aunts and uncles on the Sussex coast. Her father had taught her to swim in the ocean, which was much more difficult than swimming in a pool. She had jumped off docks without fear. So had Louis. Where was Louis? Was he alive? Whether or not he was, and maybe more so if he wasn't, she had to stay alive. She had to. She kept holding her breath underwater. She heard her father's voice telling her, When you are in difficulties, remember you are like a cork. Human beings are like corks. When they go down, they come up. Her life jacket would help too. But her father had warned it's when you come up that you have to work. And then, just as her father said she would, she bobbed to the surface. It seemed she had been in that tunnel a very long time, but it couldn't have been more than a minute. Work, her father's voice said to her, work. She stretched out her arms to swim. She felt so strong, swimming against the waves, and then soon she touched something. The lifeboat! It was right there, next to her. It was still turned over, but at least she could hold on to it. Better to have an upside-down boat than nothing at all. As she scrambled up the lifeboat, she realized she had sprained her ankle, so she could only use her arms and one leg. But she managed to climb up the rounded side of the boat and grab hold of the keel, which ran along the center of the, bottom, of the boat's bottom. 
Her body was mostly out of the water, her feet still dangling in the waves. The sea was wild, the boat riding up and down the swells. If Bess could just hold on to the metal keel without falling off, she had a chance. She noticed other people, presumably from her lifeboat, holding on to the keel. She saw a row of hands clinging like hers, some of them adults, some children's. But it was so dark at that point, she couldn't see whose hands they were. All right, so then there's a picture of her in the water. Could she possibly survive until rescue came? Could the others? Where were the others? The Benares was still there, but it was sinking fast. Where was Beth? Where was Louis? So there is the end of the chapter picture. Hope you enjoyed your guests today.